Chris, you spent you spent three months or something last year or four months last year campaigning for this woman sitting opposite you and you've never met her before. You didn't know her. You you met her mum. How, how does it feel? You're just sitting here in the same room. Uh, it, it feels it still feels unreal. I mean, it felt, the whole the whole story is feel, has such an unreality to it. Something that you know, so I never imagined would happen. Um, and at the time, it was hard for us to grasp. It's still hard to grasp. I mean, it doesn't. It sitting here with Sarah doesn't feel particularly surprising. I might easily have been sitting here with Sarah doing some work for Amnesty International or something, and some other, you know, situation. Mm. It's not surprising. But it's hard to sit here and say I'll actually get my head around the fact that Sarah's been through what she's been through. Mm. Which I mean, it's it's just been life changing because also when you're when Sarah's mum was over last year and and Shane's mum, your mum, well Shane's mum was at um, the front line club with Drew Dyke from Amnesty International, with the head of BBC Persia, with Mazia Bahari. And two of them, Mazia Bahari and the head of BBC Persia, being in Edinburgh business themselves. And so it also it also rubs in that the life we think of as normal is just so not normal for people in other countries. Because for the Iranians, I remember I remember the point that the really poignant thing they said about life in Iran is like it's in the rest of the world or in this country, you have holidays in Iran. It, you, you go to different prison site. <laughs> if, every now and then you go to a prison. It's almost like taken for granted mm. that if you're somebody who's like we are here, who speaks out, you're going to probably have some time in open prison. Mm. And so it's been life changing as well. So to see how complacent they are. But you, you said to us that um, when you were in prison, you heard, when you were in open prison, you heard that there were some people campaigning for you. Mm-hmm. And how does it feel? What? So how does it feel like as somebody in that situation to know that there's people or organisation in the outside world that's that's campaigning yeah. for you? Well, there's there's nothing more helpful when you're in prison than knowing that there are people that are not going to forget that you're there, um, that you're not lost to the world that in some way you're still very much a part of the world, even though you can't actively participate in it. And being in prison, everything is taken away from you except um, <laughs> except your will to survive and uh, your will to live. And knowing that, that there are people on the outside that believe in you and that your innocence matters is is really everything. So I'm sure we knew about the campaign, we knew different details, and we knew about Safe World for Women from my mom's letters, and um, it was very moving for me. And it made a big difference for us to know that the world, that at least, you know, the world was watching, that people that um, pay attention to these things were paying attention to us. Either you or Shane said, or said are they going to like us when they when they meet us? Mm, right. What was that? How did that happen? Yeah. Right. Well, it's um, it's strange to be known for, through this circumstance to so many people in the world that otherwise we wouldn't know, and um, it's very vulnerable in a sense to have the most horrible thing that's ever happened to you be something that you have to talk about again and again and that so many people in the world know about. So we we thought that um, about different people in the campaign advocating for us and Safe World for Women, my mom brought it up and I remember hearing that you had made videos about us and we thought we were so moved and, and touched by that and we thought, oh, I can't wait to see these videos, they must be so amazing. And then just, you know, these people don't even know us, but they're fighting for us. It's an amazing feeling that it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's not the same kind of relationship that you have in the world where it's based on 
necessarily, uh, you know, give and take or reciprocation or even, you know, maybe common interests or common um, priorities, but in a more abstract way. That just to feel that people were spending their time and their energy and on us because they knew that it was the right thing to do. Um, it was very moving and um, very not, not, you know, not the way that we'd normally imagined developing relationships, you know, whether it's like through our activism or professionally or just um, in our, you know, in our social circles.